Hey everyone, this is Jen and you're watching BPD Woman. On this channel, you will learn how to more effectively live with and work with your borderline personality disorder. My aim is to help you better understand your emotions, live more effectively with BPD, and adapt more effective behavior patterns to help you realize your goals. Namely using my own personal experience, excuse me, and uh, skills like DBT so that you are able to reach your goals in life and relationships. I'm not a therapist or a life coach or a PhD, but I can answer one very important question that mo many of those folks cannot, which is, what is it like to live with BPD? I was diagnosed about 20 years ago, and since then I've taken it upon myself to solve the maladaptive behaviors in my life by going through multiple rounds of DBT, about four to six now, going into intensive therapy, being a part of groups, researching all I can, watching YouTube channels, um, being in therapy, reading every major text, then rereading it, using the workbooks, and practicing these skills in real life. If you have BPD, congratulations, because you have one of the most well-treated, well-recovered personality disorders. There is more information, more resources, more studies known, and now more than ever, more centers offering DBT with more therapists and psychologists trained in the treatment of personality disorders. So if that sounds good to you, please hit subscribe below in the bell so that you never miss a video. I produce about three to five each week. So if that sounds good, let's get going. Today, I'll be looking at my notes here. We are going to finish up the mindfulness module and I'll put a link up here for the uh, DBT app that I use. And, and um, this app is a pay app. Um, I bought it ooh, about five, six years ago now for about $10 for life. Uh, it still works. Looks like the last version was updated a year ago, so I'm not sure if it's still available on the App Store. Um, I will, I, I did actually, I saw um, a comment on one of the other videos saying that they weren't able to find it. So I'm going to look into that because their website is still active and there is a um, help and support email. So I will, if you, if you want that, I, I will send that to you. Um, we're wrapping up the mindfulness module. Now, DBT is dialectical behavior therapy, which basically means dialectical is designed, actually, the um, actual definition of dialectical is the ability to see both sides of something, the black, the white, the happy, the sad, the good, the bad, um, the pretty, the ugly. And it's designed for those of us with BPD by someone who has BPD, a psychologist, Marsha Linehan, to better help regulate our emotions, uh, develop more meaningful interpersonal relationships, contain our distress using distress tolerance, all the while being very mindful. There are four modules of DBT, mindfulness, emotional regulation, interpersonal effectiveness, and distress tolerance. Today we are finishing up the mindfulness module. Now I have already done a series of videos on each of the core skills in the DBT mindfulness module. And those were, and there's videos for all of these and I'll put links up here. There's a playlist. You can uh, reach all of these videos in that playlist. Wise mind, observe, describe, participate, being non-judgmental, being one mindful, being effective. Those are the core skills. In this DBT app I have, one of the reasons I really love it is that among other things, including being able to uh, write a diary card, you are also able to um, design the app as you wish. Meaning you are able to add in other skills and even edit some of the existing text of the skills that came within the app to your liking so that it can help you in whatever way you need to help it. And, and I've added certain skills or certain keywords or phrases or quotes or anecdotes into my app where I have found it really helpful. And I've been like, ah, this could really help me 
with my recovery. So I'm going to briefly today, and I'll be putting up some screenshots here. I'll be briefly going over today some of these, the, the remaining, let's see, I've added into this, I've added about four or five additional skills. So let's let's chat about them and I'll just kind of rapid fire these. And again, these did not, these are not a part of the official DBT skills. These are things that you've probably heard before, but I'm, I have articulated in this very specific way by um, modifying my app. So let's go for it. So one of these is check the facts or what I call data mining. Now, when you are starting out with DBT, one of, one of the things that I found helpful when I was starting out is I made a album on my phone, you know, and I would put screenshots or pictures or clip art of quick images that I thought would be able to help me, right? Sometimes I would set them as my uh, screensaver on my phone. And these were images that were able to access quickly to remind me. So for instance, I put a lady sitting in a boat which for me meant sit steady in the boat. Even when the waves are a rocking or the motion is a coming, sit steady in the boat. Don't do anything, just stay still. Um, basically as an analogy for um, not letting the emotion overcome me. So the first of these I'm gonna talk about is check the facts, data mine. So think of data mining, you know, think of a miner pulling things out. Think of a computer programmer. Data mining to me means gather all the information. Be curious, not judgmental when you're trying to be mindful. Let me read my description that I wrote. Actions become habits. Habits become character. Your character becomes your destiny. Step out of these reactions. Reform your actions. Start by changing beliefs. Slow down. Now, some of this language I, I borrowed, but the last part is mine. Impressions can be wrong. It's helpful to check the facts. Ask questions, data mine. Ask yourself, what am I leaving out of my interpretation of events? So I know I've definitely had an ability to jump to a conclusion, come up with an explanation of something and then be totally off. And it's ruined relationships, it's discredited me. When you are becoming a data miner or a programmer, Okay, maybe an image that you could download on your phone is, you know, Sherlock Holmes or Mulder and Scully, somebody investigative, right? Ask yourself, do I have all of the facts? Am I leaving anything out? Data mine. Check those facts. Putting my energy where it needs to go for the day. This is another addition that I made. Where do I want my energy to go today? Where does my energy need to go today? Anger is my enemy, not my energy. What things do I need to accomplish? What will make me feel masterful? What will help me stay on track? Stay on track. Energy is not our problem, right? How we put our energy is the real key here. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel love. You're going to feel hate. Those are all natural emotions. For us, we feel them at a higher level, right? So it's all about thinking, where do I want all that energy to go today? Do I have um, a marathon I'm running today? Is that where I need to put my energy? Do I have clients to see today? Okay, so I better reserve my energy for seeing them. Um, I need to write a thesis paper today. Okay, um, then I better make sure that my energy goes into that and it, I don't get sidelined by distractions. Again, for me, that lady in the boat, you know, sit steady in the boat, having that image available to me helps me remember to sit still so I put my energy where I want it today. Okay. Remove should, excessive apologies, good and bad from the vocabulary. Okay. My description that I've typed in here is remove should, excessive apologies, and good bad from the vocabulary. Should make something a self-imposed demand. Try replacing with, I did this instead of that. This was more effective and less effective. For example, 
I really should exercise. I shouldn't be so lazy. Must and oughts are also offenders. The emotional consequence is guilt. When a person directs should statements toward others, they often feel anger, frustration, and resentment. We had, I don't know where I picked this up, um, but there was a, a statement, I think there was a DBT instructor said was, don't shit all over yourself. Okay, should, shit. Should, you should do this, you must do that, you ought do that. Those three words, when you hear them from someone else, implies a demand. It's not a question. It's an imposed demand. And I don't take demands. I'm welcome to answer your questions, but I don't take demands unless you're in the military and you have to. Likewise, using those words to yourself, you must do this, you should have done that, you ought to be doing this instead, the reaction and the consequence is still the same. You're making yourself feel bad. You're making yourself feel guilty and it will lead eventually to being angry, frustrated, and resentful. It's taken me some time, but you know, now I've replaced this, you know, even in conversations, I might be like, oh, I should have read that book. And what I'll correct myself, I'll be like, I would like to read that book more, right? It would make me happier if I exercised more. That's a way of saying something without judging yourself. You know, remember that when you're practicing these skills, you're not just practicing them on other people for their benefit. Primarily, you're, you're practicing them for you and your benefit. If you feel good inside, eventually that will come out to others. If the skill becomes ingrained and practiced within you, then when you are with other people, eventually over time, that skill, you'll be able to access it for them. All right. Walking the middle path. This is the final um, addition that I made to this module for myself in this app. Walking the middle path. When I make decisions today, am I making split decisions? Am I labeling? splitting, rushing into judgments. If I am walking the middle path with my wise mind, then am I considering the good and then, then, okay, let me start that over. If I am walking the middle path with my wise mind, then I am considering the good and the bad, weighing the pros and the cons, and I am not jumping to conclusions. Black and white thinking, zero to 100, you know, this, a frequency sometimes of us to just shoot to the stars with our emotion or our conclusion jumping can be dysregulating. It feeds into our maladaptive black and white thinking behaviors, which is a core hallmark of having borderline personality disorder. And it leaves out the bigger picture. It makes you feel bad. It makes other people feel bad. Who wants to be labeled? I don't want to be labeled. You know, I'm sure living with a mental illness, you've heard people be like, why are you so crazy? You know, you'll hear, you're, you will hear lots of derogative language, like, um, you know, oh, you're a nut job, you're a nutter, you're crazy, what, what's wrong with you? You know, um, why are you so, why are you acting so badly? You know, life is not a, is not black or white and it's it's a shade of gray it's a lot of different colors and so when you're walking around in the world when you're thinking about yourself when you're thinking about other people it's easy for our mind to label and to and, and to say good bad black white and give someone a label because that's what we've been taught to do with borderline personality disorder that black and white thinking of course we split <laughs> we have ppd so when you're walking the middle path you know, an example how this might look would be, you may be really upset with your mom or your friend, right? You be, and all you can think about in that moment is how pissed off or sad you are with them. But when you're thinking in your wise mind and considering your emotion and your logic, you remember the good times. You remember that it's not all bad. You keep in that middle part of the path. Think of it as a fork in the road. You know, you want to stay in the middle rather than splitting down this path, right? That could be another image that you download onto your phone if that's helpful to you. It was helpful to me. You know, having this image of 
it literally says, you know, middle road here. It just helped me think, okay, don't split. Don't get, don't go down this. Walking the middle path also considers things like weighing pros and cons of a situation, not jumping into a situation right away, not jumping to a conclusion right away. Again, checking the facts plays into this. If you are in wise mind, you are not deviating to one extreme or the other. So walking the middle path is just kind of another way to say, stay in that gray zone, even though I know it's really difficult. That is the wrap up of the mindfulness module of DBT. Um, next, I believe we're going into interpersonal effectiveness and that's a very interesting module. I think they're all interesting, but um, that one's pretty, pretty uh, interesting to me. So I hope it will be for you. My name is Jen. You have been watching BPD Woman. As always, thank you so much. Let me know what your thoughts are below. And until next time, be effective, everyone. Bye-bye.